Hi, welcome to the channel. This is Audi Q5 2 liter engine TDI. Basically, customer complain a lot of light on the dashboard. We'll see what's going on and what happened. First of all, I would like to connect my computer same time. It's underneath here. Right. Okay. Um, start the car. Have a look at the dashboard. Glow park sign on. A part of that uh, I can't see anything, but customer told me traction control light on, engine light on, at blue light on, like a at blue countdown mileage there. But however. I couldn't see any, yeah, see the sign, start, stop, not working, at blue, 650 miles, need to repeal, yeah, door open, hmm, some lights came back, but however, I can't see all light there, anyway, like this problem, very difficult to identify without any computer. Right, I'm going to take a computer faulty code first of all. Right, I got the all faulty codes. You can see two under engine management, one under ABS, one EPB. I'm not sure what is this. This is for the parking brake. Function limitation due to receive malfunction value. Right, okay. We'll see what's the under the yeah function limitator due to receive same faulty code U one 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 three zero zero other one P zero two three seven zero zero turbocharger boost sensor A circuit low input basically it could be wiring problem it could be sensor problem or could be boost leak somewhere or something like that i am not 100 percent sure at the moment right okay no worries right uh, yeah i think uh, we'll see what's the abs engine control module zero one three one four okay that's why he said engine light on but however at the moment no right what is this optical data bus okay no worries right okay we know the problem right Next step, I'm get ready for the bits and bits and come back to you. Basically, this car need a at blue top up and need to check the boost sensor circuit, everything. And also one more thing I need to check because I'm normally seen if it like this problem, it will affected to the DPF. I need to check the DPF pressure first of all. If it DPF block after the repair, we need to clear the DPF. Otherwise, it will trigger up faulty code. Yeah, I can see the differential pressure bit high 3.5, 35, 34, 33. Yeah, right. Basically, this car need a, after that clear the DPF also. Well, what is this? Yeah coolant might be this car has a coolant problem also well anyway it's not find out today because we concentrate only born in light at the dashboard yeah i got the ad blue before we add that blue make sure no leaking around the neck open the bottle and make sure no any smell it's like a water if it smell it's not good and also using this meter and check the add blue quality 32.5 percent yeah exactly 33 i'm happy so first of all i'll add this one no actually you know how to top up this one because there is a I'm not promoting any brand, sorry. You can put this one. And after that, I think at blue 
fill up point not sure yeah here you can open and you can add, add blue if it spill around use it water and cleans around this area you are fine i'm not going to show you how we're going to top up add blue you know now and also uh, i got the multimeter and i got the probe and i got the smoke test machine i got the dpf cleaning stuff this is the dpf cleaning stuff i think it's come two bottles normally one is the rings and one is the small bottle and the big bottle but i'm not going to promote him brand it's easy follow the instruction it's really easy what i'm going to do i'm going to inject with this one to the car leave it 5 10 minute or 15 minute after that car running and leave it 25 minute then after that again using the rings inject with the this one again leave it another half an hour that job done after that i'm going to reset the light from the computer right okay i forget to tell something i'm logging to the computer again and i'll do the small test because we done day to day base like this problem many right ignition on i'm going to the faulty cords uh, you can see now traction control also light on and the engine light on for the because of the ignition i think yeah first of all i'll try to delete these two faulty cords yeah one faulty cord gone but this one still there when i go back even i'm not touch the car i'm not start the car read the faulty cord again yeah this faulty cord not allowed to do anything right okay i can bypass lot of thing by this faulty cords i know what's the problem exactly switch off the car right normally that's why when someone has experience i don't want my smoke machine i don't want my probe i don't want my multimeter yeah just this three at the moment i need it i'll show you first of all i need a pressure sensor a pressure sensor a turbo pressure sensor a need to lift up yes up up right turbo pressure sensor a, this one three wires this is the one we are talking what i'm going to do i'm going to disconnect this connector and install new sensor without doing anything and try to reset the light and we'll have a look if it work that way i can bypass lot of things lot of hassles and one more thing always if you want to change the sensors don't use the chinese m sensors because that sensors little bit not good always use good brand could be hela like this or could be bosch or could be main dealer parts i'm always recommended yeah careful the other cheaper parts because some customers say charlie online this much that much but once i do the job something tigger up then after that customer not here i had to facing for the old problem i had to spend more time for the problem and find out what's the cause right okay this is the new sensor i'm just plug in and have a look what happened to the faulty cord before you all remember it wasn't allowed to clear dtc right okay i'll plug in leave it as it is let's go to the computer and try the same scenario ignition on right go to the faulty cords clear faulty cords bingo before you saw one message here wouldn't allow to clear however i am going back and read faulty cord see no faulty cord right okay 
I save nearly hours out of time because of my experience. Right, right. What you need to do afterward, we need to remove this screw, its torque screw behind, and after that you can remove this pipe and install new one, install back, job done. But many people try to mix up this job when you're going to clean in the DPF process. Careful, don't inject chemical through here. No, you have to inject the chemical through here because the this is the DPF pressure sensor, DPF here, right? This is the DPF. If you want, you can remove this AdBlue injector or remove this NOx sensor or the pressure sensor or O2 sensor and inject the chemical while it's car starting. Make sure it's not going into the engine. It's need to inject this side while the car starting. If it not, you can remove this pipe. This one, other pipe you can see is a blank one. This is the blank pipe. Because of that, you need to use first pipe, remove, put the chemical into the here and after that install this straw here or there or here and pump, 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 it will go chemical, leave it 15 minutes. After that, you need to start the car idle, leave it another 20-25 minutes, job done. Okay. Right, okay, once I do everything, now you know how to do that thing, how to top up the AdBlue and how to install this one. Once I done everything, I'll come back to you and I'll show you what am I going to do with the computer. It's very easy. And also, I forget to tell you, if you need to check the live data for the this boost pressure sensor A, normally you can do with the sensor, boost pressure sensor a right this is the line if you check live data for the your old sensor whatever in the car you are you when you rev the car let go <clears throat> you can see like this chart for the your old sensor if you want you can try that one when you change the new sensor this thing it will go like this much higher like this like this right if you want you can check your live data before and afterward and comment section open for you put the comment there what you get am i right or wrong because i don't want to check and show you but if you want if you have a reasonable computer you can try this step and let me know in the comment section what you find out Am I right or wrong? Okay, then once I do the job, I'll come back to you. Right, done the sensor, done the AdBlue top up and clean the DPF. All good for me. Engine bay done. Go to the special function. Go to the DPF regeneration section and we'll see any adaptation 2009 start yeah go number one replacing because we clean mean this look like a replacing yeah number two replace diesel particular filter continue logging was success continue zero gram Yes, please wait. Yeah, start the engine. Okay, continue. Right, job success. Okay, now. We left it already half an hour and I'm going to check the <clears throat> any faulty code left for the this problem. Right, all faulty code cleared but still tire pressure monitoring light blinking because if it blink mean 
if something not right with the sensor, we can't do anything for the, we have to check the sensors. I am going to check in a minute as another job, right. No faulty code, we told to the car, we already changed the DPF because we clean. Now all fine, read any faulty codes, right, no faulty code. Now next step, I am going to send this car to the good road test once the customer come but before that make sure you can see here fuel level very low less than quarter but however i'll ask the customer to top up until half a tank then after that i will send this car to the good motorway journey then after that we know what's going on and what happened for the this car at the moment job success you saw i done with shortcuts but try this way if it not work you need to find out the another video for the checking wires checking sensor checking boost leak like that but hopefully you are okay thank you see you in the next video